Shipman. I won it last year, and I was I was expecting to do good in Shipman. It started off great. Uh, went out and caught a. I think it was an 18-inch uh, pickerel or maybe close to 19. Not as big as, you know, what I'd usually catch, but for me, I, I knew it was an upgrade. Would have done better if I hadn't taken the biggest catfish of the day I had and thrown it over my shoulder because I thought I had a bigger one in the net. Me and Darren are like, you just chucked the bigger one back. 100% you did. And you didn't catch a bigger one the rest of the time, so that was fun. 15 competitors that landed seven species, so the, the end was tight. I ended up catching a huge smallmouth. It jumped and it sounded like somebody was doing a cannonball. And Andrew Burt, that happened to be within earshot of me, he's like, oh my God, Renee. <laughs> and I saw that fish and I didn't want to lose it. So I was trying to play with the drag and, and it ripped off him. As soon as that happened, I said, like, that's the tournament right there. The points that I had last year to win it and the points that I actually got at the tournament this year, I got more points this year than I did last year to win it. I really think what happened in Shipman was we're getting more competitive. Um, and we have some new guys out that have quite frankly impressed a lot of people, I think. Not to quack was interesting. Largemouth bass was, you know, priority one for everybody. If you don't get it there, you're not going to get it. Uh, last year, every, almost everybody got a big pickerel, and this year people struggled to find a pickerel. It did not fish like it did last year. I didn't land my largemouth until probably 2.30, I think. Everybody has down days, and Matt Quirk was my down day. You know, like last hour, I get a text from Renee, and anytime I get a text from Renee during tournament hours, I know he's having a bad day. So I was fully expecting others to have substantially higher numbers than I did. But when we got back to the launch, I was pleasantly surprised that I had won. Little to my surprise, Darren won. It was a great weekend for him. Uh, I ended up winning the Lunker points those day, which bumped me from fourth to third place. Heading into the finals, I thought, you know, I got a chance. I was leading all season, and then back to quack, I got bumped by three quarters of an inch for first. I knew going into the finals, it was, you know, a one point difference. And looking at the other guys that were behind, you know, a sturgeon or a muskie could bump me out of first easily. So I had to put everything on the line going into uh, Fredericton. Chipman saw newcomer Will Redman clinch a victory and prove anyone can win. While Mactaquack proved to be a difficult fish, Darren Moran leveraged a game plan and experience into his first win of the season, setting up Jean Muzeral with a .75 inch lead going into the final stop in Fredericton. Aftermath of Hurricane Ida. Hurricane Ida, the aftermath of Ida. Pulling through Atlantic Canada, intense flooding across all three maritime provinces, 60 to 100 millimeters of rain, leaving behind road closures. So not quite as intense as south of the border, but tomorrow night is when Ida finally moves out. Well, I got there and walked around at four o'clock in the morning. Stepped out to start loosening up the straps and moved down the car. Got back into the car and put on every piece of clothing I had. <laughs> it was cold. I live in Canada and it's not Florida. Feeling that wind and knowing that, well, there goes summer. We, we came off of like three weeks of 30 degree weather and then it goes down to like 10 degrees, feels like eight in the morning. And I got out of the Jeep and I thought, man, it's a lot windier than I thought. I had pants on, I had a hoodie on. As I went in my trunk and I looked for gloves and I realized I didn't bring my gloves today. First tournament all season that I didn't pack my gloves. I won't lie, I saw the waves in the wind and I kind of chuckled to myself because I know there's several anglers that are not comfortable in that. So in my head, like, well, there goes some of the competition. <laughs> it sucked. As soon as you open the Jeep door, I realized immediately I am not wearing enough clothing. Don't know what else to say. It's pretty darn cold out. I am not wearing enough clothing. <laughs> not gonna make it better, I don't think. <laughs> it's rough out there, huh? That's I was right. gonna wear shorts, and then I threw on a pair of jogging pants. Anybody that leaves is gonna stay to dry today. Got a vivid imagination. So I've been in the same condition with Renee before. We were within point and a half, I think, at the end of the year. You know, what I do? I went out and fished for sturgeon the whole day. Again, in my opinion, swing for the fences. Like, just go out there, sit there until you get one. John knows how to catch sturgeon, so sturgeon all day. I've told him a hundred times, sturgeon all day. <laughs> you need to catch a sturgeon. 